Okay, the consequence of the algebraic compatibility and then you know compatibility between algebraic structure and an order structure of R leads us to say that you know in case we have any real number A, any A that belongs to R, the set of real numbers such that A is not equal to 0, then in case we look at the square of it, it will always be positive the square of a real number is always positive. So, square of a real number is always positive. That's something that we know, but we'll try to prove it. We'll try to prove it. So I, I always keep on telling you that real analysis is all about proving the obvious things as such. Uh, so that's what we will be doing in in this consequence, or uh, uh, in this consequence of algebraic structure and and compatibility between algebra and uh, order. Now. Let us just start by looking at there are two possibilities. Now, what are the two possibilities? A does not equal to 0, okay. So, that implies either A will be positive, so belonging to the set of uh, positive real numbers. In case A is negative, that I can then I can say that minus of A will belong to the set of uh, real positive numbers. So, I have two possibilities here. Okay, so let us try to prove the first one. We have two possibilities here. So, case 1 we will take as if A is a real positive number. Okay, then what do I have by definition of B? I can multiply A with A. I can multiply A with A. If I multiply A with A, that would also belong to the positive real number set. Why? Because I am multiplying positive with positive, which will imply that a square belongs to the real positive number and that will imply that a square is greater than 0. Okay? It is very important that you do write each and every step when you are asked in your examination or any or anywhere when when it comes to uh, real analysis or mathematics in general also you need to give reasons in bracket you need to write each and every step in detail okay so that's case 1 now case 2 minus of a belongs to the real positive set of real numbers minus a belongs to the set of real positive numbers. So, of course, by definition of p product is also a sorry here we will not have this but we will have minus a getting multiplied dot product in this field this will also be a part of real positive numbers which implies that minus 1 into a dot minus 1 into a belongs to p which is the set of real positive numbers and this means that minus 1 square dot a square belongs to p right. So, which means that, which actually means that, look at it, minus 1 square, minus 1 square will be 1, okay, minus 1 square will be 1 into a square belongs to p, which means that even in this scenario, a square is greater than 0 a square is greater than 0 even in this scenario. Okay. Now, we will try to prove the b part. Now, b part very simple to see, but what exactly are we asking you? 
one is greater than zero now one is greater than zero but by definition one does not equal to zero one does not equal to zero i need to prove this is to prove okay so by definition one is not equal to zero now so that means one square will be greater than zero okay this i'm getting by using the above fact the above fact i'm using the above fact that a does not equal to zero implies a square is greater than zero so that means one square is greater than zero which actually implies that one is greater than zero because one square actually equals to one itself okay okay so that's the reason why we can say one is greater than zero this reasoning is very important when you're doing the proofs okay now part c part c in the part c what we said is that uh, let me just take you back there in part c what we are saying is that any natural number is greater than zero we know that the set of natural number is greater than zero if so n belongs to the set of natural numbers that's what is n okay if n belongs to the set of natural numbers then n is greater than 0 so we need to first of course see assume assume n belongs to the set of natural numbers and now proceed by induction in such a scenario we will use induction okay now for n equals to 1 what do we know 1 is greater than 0 correct we've just seen that okay so this assertion is true now suppose that we have already supposed that suppose it is true for true for n okay and we prove that it is true for n plus 1 and we prove that it is true for true that it is true for n plus 1 that's something that I leave to you. This is very simple. What you need to do is you just need to use the facts given to you earlier. Okay. Now what is happening if I add 1 to n. Now n is greater than 0 I have assumed and 1 is greater than 0. Okay. n belongs to p. 1 belongs to p. That means that n plus 1 should belong to p. So, which means that n plus 1 will be greater than 0. Okay. So, that is why this will be true for all natural numbers as, uh, as on you can, you can in increase the natural numbers the way you want.